Guys, Hyundai just dropped some really big news for the Ionic 6 model because now it seems they're gonna, they're gonna bring this base, very base Ionic 6 to the US and this is something that they didn't plan on doing from the start, I guess, but this base model is gonna be cheaper than the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3, so it's a pretty big deal. However, the performance, not in you know in the same range as a tesla model 3 but still i think the interior design of the ionic 6 is actually uh, co uh compensating for the lack of power because we're gonna compare the design obviously between this ionic 6 and the model 3 and why i think the ionic 6 even though it has this kind of ev bean shape to it the bubble shape i still think it's a really cool approach to EV design. I'm gonna let you know why when we jump into Photoshop. But first of all, let's have a look at this uh, new base model. So this is the car and driver article right here. I'm gonna link this article in the description if you want, want to go and check out the full one. We now have the new electric sedan starts at $42,715 and goes up to $57,215. And it offers a similar lineup to the Ionic 5. So it comes the base model, the, the very base of the Ionic 6. 6. It it only comes with a single motor and 149 horsepower which is not a lot but still i think you get i think this would be a great city commuter version for people who don't really drive a lot the range is up to 240 miles it's definitely gonna cover your daily driving driving range and then there is the forty six thousand six hundred and fifteen dollar version the sc rear wheel drive long range which has a, my, a range of 361 miles compare that to tesla model 3 long range of I think 315 miles, so this is a huge step up. I think it has to do a lot with the 18 inch wheels, so you also have a 225 horsepower electric motor, which is, you know, enough for this type of package. And the top of the line limited comes in at just over, or over $53,000 with a range of 305 miles, which as they say here could be because of the 20 inch wheels but probably more likely because of the heavier weight because you have all wheel drive however if i were to choose i think you know where i'm gonna go with this between 18 inch wheels and 361 miles of range or bigger beautiful 20 inches and still have 305 miles of range and all wheel drive I'm definitely gonna go with the 20 inch wheels and the better look of this car so let's jump into photoshop here and let's compare these two designs as some of of you may know the Ionic 6 uh, what it was a car that I was really excited about to see in a production form because it was based on the Hyundai Prophecy concept which I thought looked like a almost in a weird way specifically the rear end looked like a modernization of the Nissan uh, Datsun 240Z one of the best rear ends in automotive design and this the uh, Prophecy looked like it was a modernization of it unfortunately it didn't really translate into the production version, which you can see up here, compared to the Tesla Model 3. I still think the Ionic 6 looks cool. It has a very unique design to it. Specifically, when we look at the side view, and we have this line. There is pretty much one curvature going from the front end to the rear. And usually, if I see a design like this, with this curvature in the shoulder line, it would be a very bubbly uh soft looking design but the thing is they added some sharpness into this design which i think helps with the uh typical bubbliness and ev bean shape i don't know if i'm a huge fan of this integration he looks a little weird in the lower part when you have these vents down here open it looks like something is missing and maybe it should be a, a different way of structuring this but it looks a lot better when this front end is closed as you can see this specific ionic 6 here is in fact in motion i don't necessarily like these panels on the side as well either but uh, it's just these are just details and i think maybe graphic details that in some way adds to break up the soft surfacing of this design what i do love about the new ionic models are that they are implementing these pixelated lights going back to retro 80s style with the lighting in a new way which i think is really cool and unique definitely brings a new um, identity to the entire ionic lineup 
Looking at the Tesla Model 3, we're very used to this design by now, so I'm not gonna go through it that much. But I think both of these look good. The Tesla looks way more conservative because that's where that was uh, Tesla's game plan to begin with to keep very conservative designs so they don't have to push out new models every three or four years and keep the first models that they make in production for a very long time. And I think this Tesla Model 3 it still looks uh, modern by today's standards, but not in the interior. It still has the same interior it has when it first came out. And I really think it's time for a big update in the interior. We're gonna have a look at both of these interiors in just a minute. So looking at the side view here, this is what I'm talking about, adding some sharpness to the Ionic 6. We have this line, which is super important in this design to cut this big surface that we have here, nothing going on. It's still a beautiful and, and soft design in combination with a couple of sharp lines that cuts through it. The bumper is also pretty sharp, and then we have this nail spoiler, nail rear end, which I think looks really good, and cutting in and creating these LEDs in, in the rear end as well. Similar style of lights that we have in the front end. This shoulder line is very unique. I don't think I've seen a shoulder line like this before, where you have it go in one single curvature, and never really goes back up in the rear or something like that. It just keeps dipping all the way to the back, creating a very unique integration of the D pillar here, going is kind of melting into that same shape. I think it's a nice and uh, innovative way of designing shoulder lines, specifically on EVs. And this Ionic 6 here look like it has the the larger 20 inch wheels, which look pretty good for EV wheels. It's not covered up too much, which we see a lot in EV wheels. It looks like pretty normal wheels that could be fitted to an internal combustion engine as well. And yes, you lose a little bit of range, but I'm always in favor of having some cool wheels. So I'm gonna show you in the rear view, I'm gonna add some Vossen wheels <laughs> onto the Ionic 6, just to show you the, uh, the potential that the Ionic 6 has. You also saw the potentials when they introduced the Envision concepts. They had the Ionic 6 there and the Envision uh, 75, I think it was called. Super cool designs and I think, I hope there will be an end version of the Ionic 6 that looks similar to the Envision concept in the future. The Tesla, again, very traditional by now, a shape from Tesla. You have almost internal combustion engine proportions, which I do like. The greenhouse sits a little higher, I feel, than if it was if it was an internal combustion engine. And maybe the hood slopes a little faster. But other than that, you could definitely mistake this for an internal combustion engine. I still think that these Uber turbine wheels look really good on the Tesla Model 3. Now, looking at the rear view, this is, I think, the money shot for both of these cars. I think this is the best angle for the Ionic 6, it looks planted here because of this sloping roof line that goes right here and then dips all the way down and then you have this nail rear end with a big diffuser that feels almost oversized for this type of vehicle, but I like that they have the LEDs inside here as well, creating this retro feel all around the car. So you have the LEDs here, the pixelated LEDs in the taillights and also in the front headlights. And I do believe that you have some LEDs in this spoiler as well, if I remember correctly. Having this double spoiler in the rear, it adds to the sportiness of this car. And just look at this, if we just slap on some Vossen wheels on here, you can definitely see the potential of the Ionic 6. I think it looks really cool, maybe lower it a little bit, but it doesn't really need much more than that. A couple of, a, a set of really nice wheels, lower it an inch and you have a really good looking sporty EV. The Tesla Model 3, I do like the performance package. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with half an inch lower suspension these days like it did in 2020. But we do have this uh, carbon fiber spoiler, which I think adds to a nice send-off of this rear end design. And we don't have any sort of aggressive diffusers in the rear end, which I think is a mistake by Tesla. I think the performance models should be separated more visually from the long range and the standard range by having a couple of more features uh, graphically. Uh, on the outside of the car to separate it from those ba uh, other models and not just have the tiny little spoiler up here and some different wheels. But same with the side view and the front view, this still looks like a, a modern car. Like it, it feels like it could definitely be still a 2023 model, which it is, and it doesn't feel old because it's been around for a while now and I feel it's 
Time for an update, at least in the interior, which we have here. So, 149 horsepower for the base Ionic 6. And I think the base Model 3 standard range rear-wheel drive has around 295 horsepower. 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. I'm not sure what the Hyundai is going to do 0 to 60 with 150 horsepower. It's not going to be as fast as the Tesla. But I think it compensates for that by looking at this interior looking at uh, the tesla interior it's so stripped down they've only made i think one up one or a couple of updates since it came out and that is the 2021 they added this piece in the door here for example and i think they made these uh, scroll wheels metal instead of plastic small details like that but overall it's looked the same since it came out now look at the material choices the different textures and the uh, ambient lighting that we have in the Hyundai and you can definitely see why it would make sense to consider the base model Hyundai over the base Tesla Model 3 even though it's lacking a lot of power. We do have a uh, gauge cluster first of all which you don't have in the Tesla Model 3 and then you have the infotainment screen which I think looks pretty well integrated because it has this bevel bezel around it this silver chamfer edge which looks cool and then you have some ambient lighting here and this steering wheel is typical ionic with these four dots which I'm not a huge fan of the design of the steering wheel specifically but it's kind of suits an EV to have a very simplistic bubbly looking steering wheel and then it looks like the dash itself wraps around all the way into the side of the door on this side which I think is a really cool design feature it feels like if you were to think about which of these designers the interior designers of Tesla or the interior designers of Hyundai which which team put in the most effort to make it feel nice and comfortable with some cool uh, tech features and and styling cues on the insides it's definitely gonna go to to Hyundai and that's why I think power yes it's fun to have 295 horsepower compared to 150 but I think it's just as important to consider the the interior of the car because that's where you're gonna spend all of the time driving it let me know which one you would pick the standard range uh, model 3 or the new Ionic 6 they cost almost the same the uh, Ionic 6 is a little cheaper than the standard range plus but if I were to buy one of these today I would definitely go for the Hyundai add some 20 inch wheels on there and I'm good to go.